The unveiling of time capsules provides a tangible connection to the past and a glimpse into the minds and lives of those who lived before us. These fascinating artifacts were buried with the intention of speaking to future generations. Join me for today's video. I'm counting down the 15 most amazing time capsules finally uncovered. Number 15. The Detroit Century Box In 1900, the mayor of Detroit created an interesting time capsule project. Set to be open a century later in the year 2000, the open box was filled with photos and letters describing the state of affairs in Detroit, along with predictions for the future. For example, in his own letter, Mayor Maybury commented, We travel by railroad and with steam power from Detroit to Chicago in less than 8 hours, and to New York City by several routes in less than 20 hours. How much faster are you traveling? Meanwhile, major businessman Orrin Baldwin commented, I predict further that Sandwich, Windsor, and Walkerville, now in Canada, will be part of the city of Detroit and that Ontario will be a state of the United States of America. Number 14. The Nickelodeon Time Capsule so of all the time capsules out there, one of the strangest has been the Nickelodeon time capsule. It was buried in 1992 to celebrate the opening of Nickelodeon's first production. The contents were a fevered dream of 90s memorabilia, including rollerblades, a Nintendo Game Boy, a VHS of Back to the Future, and Home Alone, and a Twinkie, among other things. Now, while the plan is for it to be opened on its 50th anniversary in 2042, it had to unofficially be opened and resealed in 2005, when it was moved to the Nickelodeon Suites Resort in Orlando. Number 13. John Brashear's Box on August 14th of 1894, American astronomer John Brashear placed a small metal box in the cornerstone of the Astronomical and Physical Instrument Works in Pittsburgh. On March 24th of 2015, this building, which now bore John Brashear's name, was being torn down when the box was found inside the wreckage. It contained almost 60 carefully selected documents, photos, and objects, including a lock of his wife's hair, business correspondence, and a small piece of glass labeled, one of the first pieces of optical glass made in America. May we hope that when this stone is opened, America will lead the world. Number 12. Wall Street so, while Wall Street may have some of the busiest workers on the planet, in 1914, a group of merchants found the time to create a time capsule. They sealed it with the intention of being opened in 60 years, but due to it being forgotten about in storage, it wasn't until the 100th anniversary that it was belatedly opened. An inspection made it clear that it was designed to showcase the financial and cultural scene in New York in the early 20th century, and it included a series of newspapers, a guide to the New York Public Library, and a book on American art. Number 11. The 1876 Century Safe According to most sources, the world's first fully planned and official time capsule debuted in 1876. The story goes that New York Magazine publisher Anna Dime assembled the so-called Century Safe at the U.S. Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. The iron box was stuffed with 19th century relics, including a gold pen and inkstand, and a book on temperance, a collection of signatures, and snapshots of President Ulysses S. Grant and other politicians. After being sealed in 1879, it was taken to the U.S. Capitol, and eventually left under the East Portico. Though nearly forgotten, it was later rediscovered, restored, and unlocked on schedule in July of 1976 during America's bicentennial celebrations. Number 10. The Helium Time Columns Monument This one's located at the Don Harrington's Discovery Center in Amarillo, Texas. This futuristic six-story stainless steel structure is rather unique. Erected in 1968, it was made to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the discovery of helium. Now, the choice of Amarillo was rather symbolic. After all, it is the primary location of the U.S. government's strategic helium reserve and has been a site of major helium production since 1927. This makes it the perfect place for this monument, which consists of four helium-filled time capsule columns that hold exceptional books, artifacts, and documents that will tell future generations about what life was like in 1968. These documents will also remind them of the importance of responsibly using natural resources and are supposed to represent a well-rounded sample of the period in which they were created. Now, in May of 1993, the first time capsule was opened during a two-day celebration, and in September of 2018, the second one was opened as well. 
When the 2018 capsule was opened, there was also a project initiated to refill it with new items donated from members of the community, with the plan being for this new capsule to be opened in 75 years, in 2093. Beyond this new capsule, the remaining two capsules are set to be opened in 2068 and 2968. And I just really hope that by that time, enough people will still be around to open all of them. Number 9. Al Capone's Time Capsule Al Capone was one of the most feared gangsters during America's Prohibition era, and from July of 1928 until his arrest in February of 1931, he ran his operations from the Lexington Hotel in Chicago. In the 1980s, a construction company who was renovating the hotel found a number of walled-off subterranean chambers on the property. The belief was that these belonged to Al Capone, and in 1986, a certain Geraldo Rivera hosted a two-hour live TV special dubbed The Mystery of Al Capone's Vaults. Watched by a total of 30 million viewers, the hope was that missing bodies or money would be found. However, when the vault was finally opened, the only things found inside was dirt and several empty bottles, including one Rivera claimed was for moonshine. Well, after several attempts to dig further into the vault, Geraldo admitted defeat. Unfortunately, this wasn't the only hyped-up time capsule to lead to disappointment on live TV. Just two years earlier, in 1984, a safe was recovered from the shipwrecked SS Andrea Doria, which was at one time one of Italy's most beautiful and luxurious passenger ships. The safe came from first class, and it was believed that it may be filled with valuables. However, much like the Al Capone safe, the water-filled box of steel had very little of value in it. More specifically, a few packets of $20 bills and some Italian lira were all that was inside, making the find a bit of a bust. Number 8. The Lion's Head So while most urban legends turn out to be false, the Lion's Head time capsule was one that strangely turned out to be true. You see, back in September of 2014, the Bostonian Society decided to take down the lion and unicorn that stand atop the old state house. Now, the primary reason behind this was the need for restoration. After all, the statues had stood untouched for 38 years, and it was clear that the lion required some gilding and the unicorn re-silvering. However, while this may have been the main thrust behind them being taken down, the Bostonian Society was also on the lookout for a time capsule. For years, a rumor had been going around that a capsule was located inside of the lion's head, and the hope was that an investigation would determine its existence. Despite some skepticism, after scanning the lion with a special fiber optic camera, they saw the time capsule lodged in place with copper bands. After a careful extraction, officials uncovered various Boston newspapers from 1901, campaign buttons including one of Teddy Roosevelt, a nail from the Old South Church, photographs of several late 1800s Boston mayors, and wood removed from the Old Lion in 1900. What was truly incredible was that the time capsule was truly airtight and watertight, meaning that the capsule's contents didn't interact with oxygen or moisture, and thus remained in surprisingly good condition. As a result, the items were able to be safely put on display for the public to enjoy. And if that wasn't cool enough, once the statue restorations were complete, the decision was made to not only put them back up, but also create a new time capsule inside the statue, with the idea being that it would be opened a century from the original capsule's finding. In other words, the year 2114. Moving on to number 7, The Revere Reveal. Paul Revere and Samuel Adams were heroes of the American Revolution, and so it's fitting that in 1795, they allegedly laid down what is believed to be the oldest time capsule in the United States. The story goes that on July 4th of 1795, the box was laid beneath the cornerstone of the Massachusetts State House. While not a time capsule in a technical sense, after all, there's no set specific date on which to open it, it's placed within the walls so that if the area ever needed to be repaired, it can be opened and potentially improved upon by others. Now, to date, the capsule's been rediscovered twice. The first time came in 1855 when workers adding new features onto the state house unearthed the box. At this time, its contents were cleaned and documented, additional items were added to it, and then it was resealed in plaster and put back in place. It remained there for over 150 years, and by fate, a water leak happened in that section of the building in December of 2014. Curators from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston carefully opened the container to reveal a series of coins, an intact newspaper, a copper medal bearing George Washington's likeness, and a silver plaque likely engraved by Revere. Upon finding it, some of the items were put on temporary public display. However, on June 17th of 2015, the decision was made to reseal the capsule, 
but before sealing it up, a silver plaque, a mint set of 2015 United States coins and dollar coins of President Lyndon B. Johnson, John F. Kennedy, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and Harry S. Truman were added. So therefore, when the capsule is eventually unearthed once again, it will be an interesting testimony to the history of both Boston as a city and the United States in general. Number 6. An Abandoned Parisian Apartment now, generally speaking, someone with an apartment in the heart of Paris's 9th arrondissement would probably be looking to use their prime piece of real estate. However, the apartment abandoned by a certain Madame de Florian seems to have fallen through the cracks. The story goes that de Florian had inherited the apartment from her grandmother, who was part of a certain type of courtesan known as Les demi Mondain. These ladies were famous for their lavish lifestyles, constant partying, and high-profile suitors. In all but name, they were elite prostitutes. While this apartment saw a lot of use in the 1800s and early 1900s, when she inherited the home, she didn't keep it for very long. That's because in 1940, she abandoned the apartment as the Germans advanced towards Paris. Once the war was over, though, she kept the apartment in her name but never actually returned. And for some reason, she kept it a complete secret from her friends and family. In fact, it was only upon her death in 2010 that the existence of the apartment was revealed in the 91-year-old's will. When her family went to see it, they discovered what can only be described as a treasure trove. Left exactly how it was when she had left, the apartment was not only a time capsule for life at the time, but also a capsule of high-valued items. These included valuables such as an ornate makeup dresser, a stuffed ostrich, a painting of her grandmother that had been created by the Italian artist Giovanni Bodini. And this painting was rather unique, as love letters found in the apartment and a reference to the painting by Boldini's widow in an old memoir revealed that it was created by Boldini as a sign of his love. Now, if that wasn't cool enough, the romantic gesture also turned out to be a windfall, as the painting would go on to hammer for nearly three and a half million dollars at auction. So, the discovery of this apartment was a pleasant surprise to both the family and historians, to be sure. Number 5. Confederacy Capsules so the Civil War was one of the darkest times in American history, yet during the late 1800s and early 1900s, that didn't stop many cities and southern states from erecting monuments to honor their deceased Confederate heroes. Often built in a bid to celebrate a heritage of white nationalism and intimidate local African American populations, they continued the negative tradition of the Confederacy. Thankfully, some changes in public attitudes led to many being torn down in the mid to late 2010s. And interestingly enough, these teardowns not only gave solace to local populations that wanted to put Confederate celebration to rest, but also led to the discovery of several time capsules. The first notable Confederate time capsule was discovered in 2017. The monument in question was the Confederate Memorial in St. Louis, Missouri. Put up in 1914, it was torn down as part of an agreement between the city of St. Louis and the Missouri Civil War Museum, and upon its destruction, a copper time capsule was found sealed in the center of the very bottom of the statue. Only uncovered after a careful chipping through about 40 tons of concrete, the capsule was reportedly slated to be opened at a charity event. However, there seems to be little info about there as to exactly what was inside. Then, in 2018, the decision was made to tear down the General Beauregard Equestrian Statue in New Orleans, Louisiana. This was erected in 1913, and upon its destruction, a copper box was found beneath the base. After being opened, it was found to contain Confederate memorabilia, including photos of Confederate General Robert E. Lee and Confederate President Jefferson Davis, flags, currency, medals, ribbons, and other paper items related to the city. Yet perhaps the most historically significant time capsule find came in 2020. It was located on the grounds of the North Carolina State Capitol. Once destroyed, the Confederate Soldiers Monument was found to house a box holding a stone believed to be taken from Gettysburg, a pair of buttons that belonged to General Robert E. Lee, and weirdly enough, a strand of hair plucked from his horse, Traveler. However, since the metal box was severely damaged by the elements, much of what was inside was in bad shape, and items are believed to have once been buried inside, such as Confederate money, maps, and a Bible from the Appomattox Courthouse. They're believed to have rotted away. In any case, while all these statues may have largely negative connotations, the time capsules located in each and every one of them provide an interesting glimpse into what exactly city officials at the time wanted to be remembered by. Number 4. Pompeii So while not technically a time capsule in a traditional sense, the unique way in which Pompeii was preserved in posterity allowed it to arguably be the world's largest time capsule. 
It's often called the Vegas of the ancient world, Pompeii was known to be a playhouse filled with everything from live entertainment to brothels. While it did offer fun times year-round, we wouldn't have wanted to be there in October of 79 AD. That's because over the course of two days, nearby Mount Vesuvius erupted, ejecting molten rock, pulverized pumice, and hot ash at a rate of 1.5 million tons per second, and ultimately releasing 100,000 times the thermal energy of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As you might imagine, this was bad news for the city of Pompeii and the neighboring city of Herculaneum, as both were obliterated and buried underneath a massive pyroclastic flow and ashfall deposit. Now, while this was tragic in a human sense, after all, a total of about 20,000 people perished, what it ended up being was a massive boon for archaeologists thousands of years later. That's because the city being completely covered in ash proved to be a great thing for preservation. Not only did it prevent the elements from eating away at the city, but it also ensured that it remained untouched by looters. After all, it wasn't until 1594 when a certain Count Muzio Tutavilla first uncovered it while digging a canal. In 1748, further excavations under the reign of Charles of Bourbon found even more structures, and excavation has continued to this day. This in turn makes it a time capsule into the lives of the ancient Romans, and a lot has been learned about life during this time period, especially in regard to the day-to-day -day activities of those who lived in the empire. Now, if you'd like to visit, be prepared for a long day of walking. At 440,000 square meters, it would take about three days to visit all of the city's squares, temples, baths, public buildings, private villas, and shops. And while excavations are ongoing, Pompeii is currently split into nine sections, and you certainly can't visit them all on one day trip. Certain areas such as the amphitheater, baths, forums, and brothels are worth setting aside time for. Yet so long as you can look at these bodies with a bit of morbid curiosity, a trip to Pompeii is well worth it. Number 3. The Paris Opera House Vault on December 24th of 1907, a group of music aficionados met at the Paris Opera House to bury and seal a project that they would never get to see to fruition. Organized by Alfred Clark, who was the head of the wildly successful Gramophone Company, his original intentions were strictly economic. After all, his primary objective was to draw attention to his company and the new flat disc records it was promoting. Due to the incredible amount of free publicity the project received, he was certainly successful, yet the value it had to future generations was also significant. You see, the project in question had to do with music. More specifically, the idea was to set aside a number of records so future generations could discover the musical taste and quality of sound recording in the early 20th century. These records were put in a time capsule in 1907 with the idea that they would be opened 100 years later in 2007. Now, there was a minor addition in 1912. After all, 24 records and two more containers were added to this trove, with this including a new hand-cranked gramophone. The idea was that once the century was up, modern listeners could use the gramophone to hear the collection that was put together. Once 2007 rolled around, the time capsule was opened and the records were examined. Now, the selection chosen was rather interesting. First and foremost, there were a few real surprises. After all, important names such as Rossini, Donzanetti, Verdi, Bizet, Wagner, and Mozart were all part of the collection. However, there were a few composers that have become rather obscure in the past century. With these musicians, including Adolphe Adam, Giacomo Meyerbeer, Victor Massé, and Ambrose Tomas. What's perhaps most fascinating is that some very old composers who are popular today, such as Gluck, Handel, and Monteverdi, didn't get a single entry. Now, it's also worth noting that the quality of the recordings is far from perfect. After all, recordings were made by piping sound through a horn to a diaphragm attached to a cutting stylus, creating a rather scratchy audio quality. It's also worth mentioning there's been a few hitches in the plans for the capsule. For example, in 1989, air conditioning was being installed in the building and the storage room where the containers were to be inspected. During the installation, it was discovered that one of the 1912 containers had been opened and emptied and the gramophone was missing. In response, three remaining containers were moved to the French National Library for security. Once opened in 2007, further complications arose when it was discovered that the records had been wrapped in asbestos-covered cloth, which only technicians wearing all body protection could handle safely. To make matters worse, some of the recordings had been broken, making it impossible to play all the records. Due to all these complications, the decision was made to only play some of the recordings and to use the list of musical pieces provided to find replacements in the library's 350,000-piece strong pre-1938 collection. 
The decision to use only some recordings was also influenced by practical concerns. After all, playing an old record even once slightly damages it, and so the decision was made to play some to test sound quality, but to leave the rest untouched until a non-invasive way of playing them is invented. In any case, if you'd like to listen to the collection today, you're in luck. The entire set has been released on CD. Number 2. Voyager Golden Record Of all the time capsules on this list, the only one that is not meant to be opened by humans is the Voyager Golden Record. It was launched in 1977. The premise was simple. It would be launched into space, and if intelligent, space-traveling life did exist, the hope was that they would pick up this time capsule, use it to learn about Earth, and then travel to our planet. Now, the time capsule itself is not traditional. Rather, it was an old-timey record. This record, which was made of metals such as aluminum, copper, gold, and uranium, was meant to last a millennium. In fact, the uranium in the record, which has a half-life of four and a half billion years, was put there so aliens can calculate how old the record was at the time of the receipt. The record itself was made as two copies in a cooperative effort between a French and American company. These two records were shot up aboard the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes. And while not headed towards any particular star, they're still both in space, and are the first and second farthest human-made objects from Earth. The idea is that since these are the farthest objects from Earth, they have the highest chance of coming into contact with an alien civilization. Now, the cool thing about the record is that it has both a visual and audio element. The visual element consists of a series of images atop the record and images recorded inside of it. The pictures on the top of the record are mostly instructive. For example, the top drawing shows the typical signal that occurs at the start of a picture, alongside a bunch of binary numbers and symbols to try to show exactly how to play the pictures and sounds on the record. While the sounds are played like a normal record, the 116 images on it are encoded in analog form and composed of 512 vertical lines on top of the record. Now, in terms of the images, they're meant to show both what life was like on Earth and to display different objects in our solar system. For example, these include a woman in a grocery store, people licking, eating, and drinking food, and the planet Jupiter. Meanwhile, the sounds on the record includes a series of audio recordings to represent Earth. These include natural sounds made by things like surf, wind, thunder, and animals, spoken greetings in 55 ancient and modern languages, musical selections from the different cultures and eras, and other human sounds such as footsteps and laughter. To top this off, there's the inspirational message per Aspera ad Astra in Morse code and a printed message from U.S. President Jimmy Carter. It's also worth noting that there was a bit of controversy surrounding Carl Sagan's wish to include the Beatles' 1969 song, Here Comes the Sun. While the Beatles expressed interest, the owner of the copyright, which was a certain company known as EMI, asked for $50,000 per record for the two records. Given that the entire Voyager cost about $18,000 to produce, it was way out of budget, and as a result, one of the best songs of the 1960s simply never got the chance to be on an immortal record of human history. In any case, when asked for his comment on the project as a whole, Carl Sagan, who was one of the main organizers, noted that the spacecraft will be encountered and the record played if only there are advanced spacefaring civilizations in interstellar space. But the launching of this bottle into the cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life on this planet. Well, on my end, I would agree. Number 1. Miss Belvedere while most time capsules are beautiful markers of a long-lost time, the Miss Belvedere is one of the few time capsules on this list that's widely considered to be a failure. Its story begins in 1957. During this year, the state of Oklahoma was celebrating its 50-year anniversary, and in order to celebrate, the city of Tulsa wanted to create a memorable statue jubilee project that would truly set them apart. They settled on a time capsule, and their idea for it was pretty novel. Rather than use a safe or a box, the organizers decided to use a new desert gold and sand dune white two-tone 1957 Plymouth Belvedere Sport Coupe. The idea was that this car, if filled with items, would be a great testament to what life was like in 1957, while also giving the winner a brand new car that, according to the event chairman, Lewis Roberts Sr., represented an advanced product of American industrial ingenuity with the kind of lasting appeal that would still be in style 50 years from now. Now, I say winner because this wasn't just a time capsule, but a competition. The premise was simple. The contest had locals predict the 2007 population, and the lucky heir of the person who came closest would win the car and a $100 savings bond. 
Now, before being buried, the car was filled with items such as a five-gallon container of gasoline, a case of motor oil, a case of Schlitz beer, and items that were considered typical contents of a woman's purse, including two bottles of tranquilizers, an unpaid parking ticket, 14 bobby pins, a compact, cigarettes, matches, two combs, a tube of lipstick, a package of gum, a plastic rain hat, pocket facial tissues, and $2.73 in bills and coins. Once all that was put together, the car was lowered about four meters into a concrete vault, placed on a steel skid and covered in a wax-like substance. Unfortunately, this didn't manage to protect the car from the elements. When the car was uncovered 50 years later in 2007, it was found sitting in over a meter of water. And while no one knows exactly why this was the case, a water main bursting in 1973 and road vibrations have been theorized. What was clear was that the car was ruined. A sea of mud had not only turned the once beautiful car into a rust bucket, but had severely damaged almost all the artifacts inside. In fact, the only thing that was really good shape were the few items stored in a sealed steel container and the chrome on the front bumper, which shone brightly once was cleaned. Now, the winner of this car was a certain Raymond Humbertston, whose guess of 384,743 was closest to the actual figure of 382,457. Since he died in 1979 and his wife had died in 1988, the car and savings account, which had grown to a value of $666.85, were awarded to Humbertston's surviving sisters and nephew. In any case, upon receiving the vehicle, they shipped it off to the New Jersey facilities of Ultra One, which is a restoration firm whose specialty product is a de-rusting solution, which is designed to remove rust while leaving the underlying metal paint and decals intact. Due to the advanced condition of the damage, though, the shop purchased an additional 1957 Plymouth Savoy in order to replace some of the parts, and hoped that once complete, it would be of promotional value to the shop. However, after investing more than $15,000 into the restoration, the shop put a further halt on restoration, and after being rejected by the city of Tulsa and the Smithsonian Museum, it was put on permanent display at the Historic Odo Attractions Museum in Illinois. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.